So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect to a smart fixture mount sensor using the Leviton Smart Sensor app. This is the app you will use to do all of the configuration on the sensor. First off, make sure you have the app downloaded on your phone. I've got it downloaded here and I'm going to go ahead and open the app. Once the app is open, you're going to have two options of devices to select. There's a wall box sensor or fixture mount sensor. Again, this video is going to be talking about fixture mount sensor. So we'll go ahead and click on that device and hit select. And next, it's going to start scanning for devices that are available. I just have one test fixture that's set up here for the test. If you have multiple and you're not exactly sure which fixture that you're talking to, you can click an identify button. And what it'll do for the fixture that it connects to, it'll light up all the LEDs on the sensor and then toggle the load. So if multiple devices show up and you want to group them together, such as an Isleway application, you can hit the create group button with all of those devices and they'll basically all operate in unison. You will only need to configure one device and all of those settings will be applied to the rest of the group. Now that I know which sensor to connect to, I'm going to go ahead and click on the name of the device and it'll take me to the main page in the app to do all of the configuration. This sensor and fixture shows up as fixture 143. I'm going to go ahead and change that name and you can really give it any name. I'll just call it test one, save it, hit OK. And you can now see that it shows up as test one on the app. For operating mode, there's two operating modes, auto on or photo cell only. In photo cell only, it will disable the occupancy sensor and operate only based on the ambient light available. And there's several photo cell operating modes, which we will walk through later. For timeouts, there's options from 30 seconds all the way to 20 minutes. The device will be in the 20 minute slot in default mode. For applications such as aisleways or corridors, where much of the traffic might just be walkthrough, you can hit the walkthrough enable. And what that does will reduce the timeout to two to three minutes, unless there is additional activity in the space, and then it will be per whatever normal timeout is selected in this case, 20 minutes. There's several advanced settings. As I mentioned earlier, with daylighting, there's several different daylighting modes. You can disable the photo cell entirely. There's ambient light hold off, which would be for switching only fixtures and would prevent the lights from turning on if there's sufficient ambient light present, regardless of occupancy status or there's full daylight harvesting, which is going to be set to a target light level and will dim the lights up or down based on the amount of ambient light that's available. Last one is the daylight transition lighting feature. This is more like reverse daylight harvesting and would be used in applications such as tunnels or parking garages where that first set of lights you would want to match with the outside ambient light. So if it's dark, that first set of lights would be dark rather than going to full bright to ease the transition of that lighting and vice versa. Daylight calibration, you can either do the automatic calibration mode, which takes 24 hours, or you can do it manually. There's the daylight sensor level, which can be used to increase or decrease the amount of light for the sensor to go into daylighting. There's also the daylight response time that has options from one minute up to 20 minutes and that's the amount of time that the sensor will react based on the changes in ambient light before it dims up or down. Next is dimming and load. This is where you can select your partial on or partial off levels. There's also the load setting where this is basically your high end trim and low end trim levels where you can adjust those up and down so that they balance with the dimming levels of the fixture that the sensor is connected to. The load setting can also be used in manufacturing test as this is a real time adjustment of the lighting load so you can confirm that the sensor is turning on or off or dimming up or down. Next, if you have multiple sensors that will all need to be configured to the same settings, you can save that setting as a template. Basically, once you have configured one device, you can hit create template, give it a uh, name, basically create that, and when you go to the next device, rather than going through each of those different configuration options, you can go straight to the template 
and upload all those settings to the next device. Makes it simple and easy to do the configuration. Lastly, if you want to save your settings and have them passcode protected, you can create a password that would be required so that anyone else that's connecting to the sensor would have to enter the passcode before they're able to make any changes. So as you can see, it's very simple and easy to configure this device. 